No, not really. This video is brought to you by my personal pocketbook, so if you'd like to help me out, like, subscribe, and check out my Patreon page so I can make more videos like this one. Everybody wants to talk about thermal paste. Which thermal paste is best? How long until the thermal paste effectiveness goes away? How much thermal paste is the right amount? The best way to apply it? Should you change GPU thermal paste? Some of these I have tried to answer myself to varying degrees of success, but it's time to change gears and take a look at thermal pads. And the reason for this is the memory on my 3080 Ti. While the GDDR6X is very impressive when it comes to performance, out of the box, it has a tendency to get very hot. I mean, like, damn hot. During long gaming sessions, I have seen memory junction temps rise to a sweltering maximum of 110 degrees Celsius. It's concerning, to say the least. So when Jellid reached out to me and asked if there was anything I could use for a video, I said, yeah. Which leads to a mandatory disclaimer, I received these thermal pads for free directly from Jellid. However, in no way will this affect the results or my personal interpretations of those results. And fun fact, Jellid is a word in the dictionary, meaning covered with ice or very cold. But anyways, let's ask the question, does replacing thermal pads reduce memory temps and more importantly, produce a meaningful performance difference? And to answer the question, I have conducted five series of tests each with a different GPU cooling configuration. The first is stock, so we can get a baseline. Second, I replaced only the thermal paste on the GPU to help eliminate that variable and potential performance differences. Third, replacing the old thermal pads on the face of the PCB. Fourth, replacing the pads on the back of the PCB. Lastly, the fifth and final is a bonus test, which as usual, I will outline when we get to it. As for the benchmarks, I chose to run two, one gaming and the second synthetic. For gaming benchmark, I used everyone's favorite, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I'm, I'm just clowning. I didn't use that. No, I used Metro Exodus because of its ease of use and great analytics. For synthetic, I used 3D Mark's Time Spy Extreme 4K benchmark. All temps captured with HW info. The first test, stock, stock, stock. It's a stock card about seven months old, stock clocks and stock fan curve. Starting with Metro Exodus, GPU average of 73.4, max of 80.3, memory average of 89.9, and max of 100 degrees Celsius. Average frame rate of 93.89. As for Time Spy, GPU average of 70.6, max of 78.9, memory average of 86.5, max of 100. Benchmark scored the GPU at 9,527, which caps off our baseline. So that leads us to the first change, and that is to replace the thermal paste. And taking this thing apart wasn't as difficult as I anticipated. And that being said, it was somewhat nerve wracking the first go, and was definitely more difficult than any other GPU I have disassembled in the past. The ribbons were a special pain in the butt. As for factory paste, the dye was well covered with the paste not completely dry, but showing its age. I did find the bubbles in the paste rather interesting. Also, can we take a minute to appreciate the unique design of the Founders Edition cooler? Look at this galvanized metal. It's such an unusual GPU cooler. Once I cleaned it up, I spread some Arctic MX-5 on the die and applied a dot on the cooler before assembly. And the reason I did this before changing the pads was to eliminate any performance differences that may arise with just new paste. That way we can isolate the performance differences that the new thermal pads may create. So with that, let's look at the results. Metro Exodus GPU temps only dropping two degrees to an average of 71.1, max of 80.1. Memory average of 89.4 and a max of 100. As for performance, a very slight improvement to 94.13 average frames per second. Time Spy GPU temps with a similar drop again, average of 78.7 and max of 78.6. For the sake of simplicity, I won't revisit GPU temps until the bonus tests. Suffice to say, they stay relatively static until then. Memory temps average 86.2 and max of 100. Slight improvement in performance at 9,568. I was surprised that the GPU temps didn't drop more than the two degrees. The factory thermal paste was doing a better job than I expected. So moving forward to the good stuff, the reason you click this video is the new thermal pads. And what I have for the front are two millimeter Jellid GP Extreme pads. I followed a guide created by Will Norris. He made a fantastic guide 
for cutting the thermal pad sheet. His was for the 3080 non-TI, so I just needed to make a slight adjustment to cover the extra two memory chips. That should have been there on the first place, NVIDIA. The chips on the 3080 should have had 12 gigabytes, we know that. Anyways, it was easy enough to remove the old pads and fit the new ones. What I found interesting were the old thermal pads. Essentially, they are these very malleable materials, like kind of like a Play-Doh, and it's held together with this gauze-like fabric. And the gelid ones, they felt different than that. It was like something like a coagulated thermal paste or something, and they were actually quite brittle. Anyways, let's look at the results, starting with Metro Exodus. We see a substantial drop in memory temps with an average of 75.8 and max of 86, giving us a difference of about 14 degrees from the last two tests. But more importantly, how did it do with performance? Average FPS of 94.31, not much. As for Time Spy, we see similar results with memory average dropping by almost 13 degrees to 73.6 and max dropping to 86. As for the score, another minuscule bump to 9,586. So already from these results, it seems pretty clear to me that these gelid pads are a fantastic upgrade from the stock ones, at least when looking at temperatures. However, there's very little evidence that's suggesting it'll give you a meaningful increase in gaming performance. As for other tasks, we'll talk about that later. Let's take it one step further and cover the back of the card. Continuing with the guide from Will Norris, I went ahead and cut the appropriate pieces I needed from the thermal pad sheets. These are three millimeter thick compared to the two millimeter thickness of the pads I used on the front. And as you can see, there's much more surface area covered by this mod compared to what came on its stock. There was so much more, in fact, that when I reinstalled the back plate, it had a noticeable convex bow to it. Was it worth it? Let's take a look at the results. Metro Exodus memory average dropping slightly to 75.1, max down to 84. As for performance, another teeny tiny bump to 94.45 FPS. Time Spy slightly better results with memory average down to 71.6 and max at 84. However, the benchmark was almost identical at 9,587. So overall, not a game changer in any respect other than some mild reduction in temps. But of course, I have one more thing to do. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, it's the bonus test. And what this has to do with is the back again, because before I even applied the new thermal pads, the back plate would be hot to the touch when under load. And now with those new pads, I suspect even more energy is finding its way to the back. The problem is that there's very little surface area on that guy to get any adequate heat dissipation. So obviously it needs a heat sink. And since I am a fan of reusing other bits, for some real MacGyvering, instead of buying a dedicated heatsink for this project, I stuck on four M.2 heatsinks, which I used in another video, and to help the cooling along a bit further, the fan I used for my super cool custom triple fan cooling mod. Ladies and gentlemen, there it is. It's looking pretty janky, and I think this thing is ready to rip. Do the results say that? Well, Metro X's GPU averaged down to 70, max at 78.6. We can see that the pads have had an effect on the GPU temps, even though they aren't in direct contact with the chip. And I was actually expecting it to stay the same or even rise a bit in the two tests preceding this last mod test. Memory average at 74.9 and a max of 84, basically the same. And the performance, another tiny bump to an average of 94.82 FPS. Time Spy, not a bad dip. GPU average down to 66.2 and max of 76.5. Memory only half a degree down to 71.1 and a max of 84. For the benchmark, it reached the highest yet at 9,606. Nothing too crazy overall, just a mild reduction in temps and I suspect a more substantial heatsink would do a better job even if just by a bit more. I mean, these heat sinks are hot to the touch when the GPU is under load. So at the very least, they are sapping away enough of that heat for me to feel like they deserve a spot in my case. And to be honest, I kind of like the janky look of it. So those are the results. First thing is first, as always, take a look at these numbers and decide for yourself and if it's worth it for you to actually put new pads on your GPU before I spew my opinions, which of course I've already done to some degree. That's how I started this video when I said, no, they aren't worth it. But of course there is nuance to that conclusion. 
First off, when I say it's not worth it, what I mean is it's not worth it for gaming. You'll likely not see any meaningful performance difference for the most part. Metro Exodus not even gaining a single extra average frame after all these modifications, and Time Spy only gaining 79 points. That being said, these tests were relatively short. During long sessions, my memory temps have hit the limit of 110 degrees in the summer, and that's where you would probably see some performance gap widen, but I still don't think it would be by a huge amount. Secondly is crypto. I don't mine with my card, but many do. And it's well documented online that memory temps can easily be pushed to the limit when mining. Many have had excellent results with swapping to new thermal pads. So if you mine regularly, I'd recommend getting some new pads on there. And finally, to answer a slightly different question, do I recommend changing the pads if you're only gaming? And I know it's pretty much the same question, but anyways, the answer to that is yes, if you're into tink tinkering. If you have a Founders Edition card like mine, I mean, if you have any card that is easily reaching 100 degrees plus with the memory chips, then yeah, buy a single sheet for the face of the card and slap it on. It'll give you some peace of mind knowing that you're getting most out of your card and at the very least running optimally with a solid buffer to the thermal limit. And of course, this is all said with the disclaimer that you may be voiding your warranty and if you're not careful, you might damage the card. Even I didn't get away scot-free the last time I was attaching the board to the cooler, it wouldn't fit for whatever reason, and I ended up breaking a tiny part of the PCB. And it still works, but it could have been much worse, and the video you are watching right now might have been very, very different if it even existed at all. And that wasn't the only problem I ran into. After applying the pads on the face of the card and reassembly, the fans on the GPU ramped up to 100%, making it sound like my PC was trying to take off. Turns out I didn't tighten the screws enough and it was easily remedied after another teardown and reassembly. But the point is, stuff can go wrong. Not that I want to discourage anyone from repairing or modding their own hardware. However, if you want to get cooler temps and marginally better performance without any tinkering of the hardware whatsoever, there's a solution. And that'll be for the next video. I'm not gonna do that now, obviously. We're, we're about to end. So with that, this has been Tech Illiterate. My name is Nick. Thank you for watching. Everybody wants to talk about thermal tapes. Pate, thermal tape. We recording. Yep. We're still hot, we're still hot. <clears throat> the time I waste doing stupid gags. Oh God, it's disgusting.